Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yanatasma Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa, Tarubhishya, Kriba, Sindhu, Pa'evacha, Titanam, Bhavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo, Namaho, Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityahananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Sivasri, Gaur, Bhakta, Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare. So before I begin... Before I begin, I'd like to just uh, express my gratitude for the opportunity to come here and to be with all of you and to engage in probably is, without a doubt, the most important activity in the world, either in all aspects of the holy name alone, is the only welfare work anywhere. So Krishna has come in the form of his holy name to benedict us all and to elevate us to his association. Kali Kale Namarupa Krishna Avatar. The holy name is an incarnation of Krishna. It is non-different than Krishna. Nama Chintamani Krishnas, Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha, Purnya Sudya Nitya Mukta Abhinna Tvam Nami Namino. Abhinna means different. Uh, uh, Abhinna means different. Abhinna means non-different. So Krishna and his name, Nami and Nama, he who is named and the, that, and the name itself are identical, absolute. So this is a mercy manifestation. We're getting the chance to, to, direct, to associate directly with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the form of his name. That means we will be uplifted away from this struggle of material energy and fixed in consciousness of Krishna. And that is ultimately the goal of life and the perfection of all of one's desires. So uh, we were hearing very nicely from these children. And they, they were so beautiful how they had recited the Shikshastika prayers. And in those prayers are the foundation for understanding the entire process of pure devotional service. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us those prayers as the essence of the whole science of pure devotional service. But those prayers are actually none different than the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's a great science as you take apart those prayers in a philosophical way, which had been done by the great souls such as the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. As Srila Prabhupada said, six Goswamis of Vrindavan wrote all of their literature based on these eight verses. I mean, that's a very amazing statement when you think of it. That means in those eight prayers, everything is there. But I want to just mention a little bit about the first prayer, Cheto Darpana Marjanam, Baba Mahadevagnir Nirvapanam, Shreya Kaiva Vrachendrika Vitaranam Vidya Vadhu Jivanam Anandam Budi Vardhanam Patipadam Purnam Rita Svardhanam Sarvatma Snaparam Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. Um, in that first prayer, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has amazingly put the entire essence of the chanting of the Holy Name in there in a very succinct way. And that is the, uh, he mentioned seven benedictions in that prayer that one can receive by absorbing oneself in chanting Krishna's Holy Name, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Not just Krishna's holy name, but the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Krishna, all of the Krishna's names are holy, but specifically the Maha Mantra. <laughs> In the Maha Mantra itself, it's unique because there are no other words in the mantra but pure transcendental sounds. In other words, all of the names 
are of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's why it's called Maha Mantra. Where you find many mantras may also have the names of the Lord, but they add other words in order to connect the words in a sutra type form, which helps to understand the philosophical principles that each of the sutras are giving us. But in this particular chanting of the Hari Maha Mantra, it's just pure transcendental sound vibration of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Cheto, Darpana Marjanam, means that there, the mind is like a mirror, it reflects what's inside, outside. In other words, we see reality according to, or we see the external vi environment which we accept as reality according to our consciousness. And everyone's consciousness is slightly different. So, but what is the holy name? It removes all of that subjective understanding of reality and gives us the, the understanding of the reality. What is that? That Krishna is everywhere and everything is in Krishna. <laughs> It cleanses the mind and awakens our uh, understanding of what is existence. Existence ultimately is Krishna who has manifested himself in the form of his different energies. There's nothing outside of Krishna's energy, and Krishna and his energy in one sense are non-different. So by chanting the holy names of the Lord, we cleanse that mirror which is full of dust. What is that dust? Kama, Kroda, Lopa, Madha, Matsarya. Uh, what is it? What, what do I leave out? Moha. And ultimately, maybe even Baya, even fear itself. So these are called the enemies of the soul. Lust, anger, greed, delusion, pride, envy, fear. And these are the features that make the material existence continue to go on. <laughs> In other words, the material energy is energized by these anarthas or bad qualities. But when we chant the holy names of the Lord, Chaito, Dharpa, and Marjanam, we're cleansing the, the, the mind of all of these things and we're awaking us to the pure nature of the soul first benediction. The second benediction, Bhava Maha Dirvagni Nirvapanam, pushes back the fire of material existence, Adi Atmika, Adi Daipika, Adi Bhautika. The material energy is consisting of various types of sufferings. These are called kleshas. And these sufferings are body and mind, sufferings caused by other living beings, and sufferings caused by higher power. Without going into a description, we all can understand these different categories because we're subjected to them continuously as long as we have a material body. But as we chant the holy names of the Lord, and it pushes back the effects of these. And when we, we, when we reach the stage of pure chanting, then we are completely free from all of the sufferings coming from material energy. And we are situated in our pure, happiness as a pure soul, part and parcel of Krishna. The third benediction is interesting. Chaito Dharma Bhava Mahadir Shreya Kaiva Rechendrika Vitaranam. Shreya means auspicious. Kaiva. Kaiva is a lotus flower. But it's a special kind of lotus. It's unlike any kind of other lotuses. It blooms under the moon rays. All lotus flowers bloom under the rays of the sun, but this particular flower blooms under the rays of the moon. And that, that, that shreya, or that auspiciousness, what means that when we hear the chanting of the holy name, the heart is like a lotus flower that is closed. Closed because of those anarthas. When the the, the moonlike holy name gives its cooling rays upon the fire of our material existence, we start to awaken to our good fortune. In other words, we become happy. We become benedicted. Everyone has good fortune. 
some of us are ex experiencing, some of us are waiting to experience. It's there in our nature. But the holy name delivers that good fortune. And what is that good fortune? Our connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is our eternal relationship with happiness, with knowledge, and with eternality. So it's very, the holy name is auspicious. It awakens the, our good fortune. Vividya vadhu divanam. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur gives a very interesting explanation of this. Vidya means knowledge, and Vidu means bride. So the bride becomes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but bride, yeah, the bride becomes enlivened in the association of the bridegroom. <laughs> Wedding day, right? <laughs> so on the wedding day, there is joyfulness between the bride and the bride. And the bride is feeling really happy. She's extremely happy on her wedding day. So this vidya, knowledge, awakens the, uh, the, good, the happiness of the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So transcendental knowledge is seen as the bride, and the holy name is seen as the bridegroom who awakens the happiness of the bride by the chant, which is synonymous with the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So if you just study books, it's very nice, we have many literatures, but we find many spiritual groups, they don't do kirtan. They like to philosophically wrangle about different teachings in the, in the Vedas, but you see it's dry. <laughs> but as soon as kirtan comes, Transcendental knowledge becomes awakened, and that awakeness gives us a realization of Krishna and the, uh, the understanding of our relationship with Krishna. Vidya Bhadhu Jiva. Anandam Bhudi Vardhanam is the next benediction. Ananda means pleasure, Bhudi means deep, and Vardhanam means ocean. There's an unlimited ocean of transcendental happiness that comes by chanting the holy names of the Lord. Now to access that ocean, we have to be attentive. Chanting is a meditation. We have to absorb ourselves in the sound vibration. I was just listening to Prashila Prabhupada this morning. I just, I just turned on my uh, yeah, iPod to listen to a kirtan and I was listening to a kirtan, and right after that, Prabhupada came on and started speaking about the holy name. I said, wow, this is amazing. This is very timely. <laughs> and he was saying, just hear. The whole process of chanting, and the benefit that you get from that is to hear. And when you hear, you respond. And the more you absorb yourself in the process of hearing, the more you go deep into that sound vibration. And not only do you catch the sound, but you also catch the devotion of that person who is chanting that sound. And when both of those are combined in the hearing process, when you respond back, it becomes so, so joyful, so filled with everything. So we have to practice this hearing process very carefully because chanchala hi pamana krishna prambati balabhadra, the mind will go anywhere and everywhere. The mind is like, Arjun said to Krishna, you're asking me to control the mind, but I think you're asking me to control the wind. It's not possible. Krishna said, you're right. It's, it is difficult. Practice. Practice. Krishna's answer in the following verse was just practice. Controlling that mind and give up the attachments to the temporary and absorb yourself in the eternal. In other words, here we have a wonderful opportunity to make so much spiritual advancement, which means so much spiritual happiness comes with that. So take advantage of that and, and hear as much as possible. Chant with your heart. I was always listening, when I listen to Madhava chant, he's always encouraging the devotees. Chant with your heart, chant loudly. These are things are not just words that we say just to make it sound good. 
They are powerful points that emphasize the quality of our chanting. If we're chanting from the heart, in other words, we're offering our bhakti when we chant and we're hearing nicely and then we're also chanting loudly because chanting loudly has an effect. It does, it has an effect. It's, it forces that energy to, to come out and when we do that and when we hear the sound that is connected with everyone doing that at the same time, it's very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. So we want to take advantage of it. We have a small room here and I think we're gonna have 2,000 people here. This is going to be amazing, I'm sure, because in Krishna consciousness there's a lot of uh, impossible things that happen, <laughs> such as putting 2,000 people in this room. Let's see how that's gonna work. <laughs> but anyway, with the holy name, anything's possible <laughs> because it's Krishna personally. Therefore, it defies all material laws. <laughs> anyway, but that, that opportunity to go deeper will be facilitated by these next two days. We can go deeper to our Krishna consciousness. It's something that we look forward. We struggle sometimes throughout the year to make advancement. When we have these programs to come together with devotees who are eager to chant, eager to uh, give their time, to inspire us, we should take advantage of that fully and just hear, chant, and absorb ourselves in the whole process. And then the whole atmosphere changes. Now I'm gonna say something you might not like, but I'm, that's okay. I've done that before. <laughs> when you're chanting, and we're all together chanting, and someone is not chanting, or talking and having separate conversations, it pulls the energy in that direction. When we're all together fast, everything just blossoms. But when we're talking, we're actually pulling that spiritual energy in another way. So when we're all together, that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he would do his sankrit, his kirtans in the house of Sri Vastakor, he would only have the most intimate associates in that kirtan because everyone was focused completely. And that's where the ecstasy comes when we're all, because we all have something to contribute. But if we're speaking, if we want, as the devotee says, if we want to, you know, I don't want to manage anything, but you know, this is what I see sometimes, it's necessary. If we want to speak outside, it, but not inside, here is where we hear, chant, and experience the happiness of associating with others who are doing the same thing. Okay, and then Anandam Bodhi Vardhanam, an ocean. The jiva, the living entity, is tiny. That's the word jiva. But the holy name is unlimited. So when the tiny jiva, who is pure spiritual energy, but tiny, connects with the unlimited ocean of Krishna's holy name, that jiva can experience unlimited happiness. So we take on a quality of unlimitedness when we connect with the unlimited holy name. That means there's no limit to happiness. You can get so happy, you'll die. But don't do it. <laughs> I'm getting one, I'm almost done. <laughs> And the, the Latin, Pratipadam Purnam Rita Swardhanam, at every step, there is newer and newer realizations of the process of bhakti. At the same time, one is awakening their spiritual identity. We all have a material identity, but we also have a spiritual identity that is eternal with Krishna in the spiritual world. That identity becomes more and more awakened through the process of Harinam Sankirtan. Pratipada means at every step, newer and newer realizations of my relationship with Krishna. And the last one, Sarvatma Snapadam. Sarvatma means all, Snapadam means bath. Your home, your family, everything you possess, everything that is connected to you gets the mercy 
of you chanting the holy names. In other words, your life becomes purely spiritual. Everything is a relationship. So we are in the midst of a great opportunity to really make wonderful advancement on the path back home, back to Godhead. So take advantage of it, absorb yourself in hearing and chanting. And you say, well, you know, I have my favorite kirtan persons and then there's others who are also here. But it doesn't matter. Everyone who is chanting can awaken our Krishna consciousness. So stay, just absorb yourself. We spend so much time during the week doing so many other things. Now for these two days, Hare Nam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Chandramoli Swami.